A blessed Lord's Day to you on this fourth Sunday of Easter, also known as Good Shepherd Sunday, for those of us who follow the three-year lectionary. Welcome to visitors who have joined us. We pray that your worship with us is blessed as our God comes to us to bless us with his gifts through his means of grace. And we follow the, an abridged form of divine service setting one, beginning on page 151 in Lutheran service book. In the prayers, we mark the commemoration of Athanasius, Bishop of Alexandria, who entered heavenly rest on May 2nd in the year of our Lord, 373. He is regarded as one of the doctors of the church, and he was the first person to identify the same 27 New Testament books we use today as canonical. Also today at the late service was to have been the rite of confirmation for five young catechumens in our congregation. While that joyous occasion has been delayed, we still will have one part of that service today, a procession. So please rise for the processional hymn, The Church's One Foundation, 644.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the fourth Sunday of Easter is from the book of Acts, the second chapter. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The epistle is from 1 Peter, the second chapter. This is a gracious thing when, mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if, when you do good and suffer for it, you endure? This is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example 
so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but now have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This is the gospel of the Lord.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On Good Shepherd Sunday, our hearts and minds turn to certain scripture passages. Today's Holy Gospel, John 10, is one, being the source of this day's theme and name. The other that immediately comes to mind is the 23rd Psalm, which so many know by heart in the authorized or King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What comfort we find in this beloved psalm of our Lord's care for each of us now, even through the valley of the shadow of death, his provision even in the presence of mine enemies, and his dwelling place for us with him forever. Literally, the Hebrew there says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for length of days, as echoed in the sixth stanza of the hymn of the day, as we just sang. I find that even more beautiful than the familiar forever, and certainly no less certain a promise. I will dwell in the house of the Lord for length of days, even unto the last day, the day of the resurrection of all flesh, the day without end, when Christ shall come again and bring to fullness the new heavens and the new earth in which righteousness dwells. Sir Henry W. Baker, who wrote this hymn version of the 23rd Psalm, which we just sang, uttered the third stanza as the last audible words which lingered on his dying lips. Perverse and foolish oft I strayed, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid, and home rejoicing brought me. Perverse and foolish oft I strayed. That confession of sin is one we all must make. Who has not strayed from the Lord and his will and his word and his ways? If you have not strayed, then, you, then have you any need for Christ Jesus? St. Peter testifies, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. Jesus didn't need to let himself be nailed upon the tree of the cross to suffer and die. But yet in love he sought me. The psalm itself, a psalm of David, says that he does all this, restoring souls and leading in the paths of righteousness for his namesake, to the honor and glory of his own name. And we know the commandment, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Or the older version, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That is, not to treat or carry his name as an empty or light thing of no weight or consequence. For the name of the Lord is not simply his identification. It is his presence and power. His name carries the essence of his being. The Lord, Yahweh, the I Am, he who is and who was and who ever shall be, I am with you. I am for you. Though he had no need in himself to do it, as though he had some lack, I am bore the cross, bore our sins, to his glory and honor and praise. Welsh-born poet and pastor George Herbert was known for his devotional lyrics as in The Temple, a work published in 1633, the year he was called from his earthly labors to rest at the glorious shepherd's side at age 39. In his version of Psalm 23, Herbert says of the God of love, my shepherd, or if I stray, he doth convert, 
and bring my mind to f- in frame, and all this not for my desert, but for his holy name. And all this not for my desert. Desert here, spelled like desert, has the meaning as when we say, he got his just desserts, what one justly and rightly deserves. Oh, what our King and God of love, our Good Shepherd, has done for you and me, bearing our sins in his body on the tree. It's by no means our just deserts. Our desert was to suffer for our own sins in hell eternally to pine. Question 17 in the Christian Questions with their answers, section 4 of Luther's small catechism asks, What motivated Christ to die and make full payment for your sins? Answer, his great love for his Father and for me and other sinners, as it is written in John 14, Romans 5, Galatians 2, and Ephesians 5. Surely there is more than enough material in those chapters to fill our ears and minds and hearts for many hours of study and devotion. Not having such time here and now, I commend them to your personal and family study and devotion. But for his holy name. To our ears, that might sound as though the Lord is being egocentric, indulging in self-love. No, that's not what the Lord God does. That's what we do. The true God is a being of majestic beauty and perfect love, an unbroken communion of one God in three persons, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. I've mentioned before how the creation is a gift of love from each person of the Godhead, the Trinity, to the others. So also is our redemption and salvation, justification and sanctification. It is, we are, a gift of love from the Father to the Son and the Holy Spirit, from the Holy Spirit to the Father and the Son, and from the Son to the Father and the Holy Spirit. The particular work of the Son is the most evident to us in this, as he, the second person of the Godhead, is the one who became incarnate, taking on our human flesh and blood, becoming one of us, true God and true man in one person, one Christ, in order to suffer and die for us. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. How can we not hear in these words of the Apostle Peter the words also of the prophet Isaiah, the song of the suffering servant? But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Through another prophet, Ezekiel, the Lord declared, The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, son of Adam. Prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, even to the shepherds, thus says the Lord God. Ah, shepherds of Israel, who have been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fat ones, but you do not feed the sheep. The weak you have not strengthened, the sick you have not healed, the injured you have not bound up, the strayed you have not brought back the lost you have not sought, and with force and harshness you have ruled them. The shepherds of Israel whom the Lord rebuked were the kings especially, as well as prophets and priests, who followed not his law in their shepherding of the sheep of his hand, his chosen people. The Lord God had always been the true king of Israel, as the intro from Psalm 95 declares and still was, even after the elders of Israel had come to Samuel and said, appoint for us a king to judge us like all the nations. They had looked at the nations around them, 
with their flesh and blood kings, and they wanted such a shepherd over them too. The Lord said to Samuel, they have rejected me from being king over them. You shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. Indeed, Samuel's warning from the Lord told them not just of the first king, Saul, but of every human king who would rule over them, some worse, some better, but all sinners. Even good King David and wise King Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. They were chosen from among their brothers, one of them, one of us, who are all sinners with them, all sons of man, sons of Adam. Well, the Lord did make prophetic provision through Moses, a command that the king must write his own copy of the law, and it shall be with him, and he shall read it, read in it all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God by keeping all the words of this law and these statutes and doing them. The Lord also declared through Ezekiel that he would again be shepherd king of his people and all the children of Adam, for he had never really relinquished his throne and kingship over Israel and over the earth. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. Truly, then, does I am in the flesh say, all who came before me are thieves and robbers. I am says, I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. If you were to observe shepherds in that part of the world who still follow the traditional ways, you would see the shepherds standing at the opening of the sheep pen, either to let them out and lead them to pasture, or to let in the sheep belonging to his flock when he brings them home. He stands and even lies down as the door for the sheep. He lays himself down across the gateway to protect his sheep. That's why thieves and robbers have to sneak in by another way, lest they run into the shepherd and his rod and staff. For our daily lives in this world, this valley of the shadow of death, our good shepherd warns us to beware of ravenous wolves in sheep's clothing, false prophets and teachers who would lead us into false belief, away from him and thus into eternal death. I am, says you will recognize them by their fruits. He lays down his word of warning as his protection for our good. Yet quite literally, I am lays down his life for the sheep. The Greek verb translated lays down means set, place, and even surrender. I am set his life, his life that cannot die, in the place we deserve. I am sets his life between us and judgment and death. I am the deathless one surrenders his life to death. Well, what great mystery is this? It is the reason for the mystery of the Holy Incarnation that the eternal Word and Son became flesh for us. I am the door of the sheep points us to Christ as our Passover lamb. That I am the door is marked with the blood of the Lamb, His own blood. That God the Son has come among us and yet remains on high, one with us in our human nature and yet one with the Father in His divine nature, is the mystery of the Holy Trinity. In that blood we are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Into the mystery of the Holy Trinity we are baptized, made one with him. As Jesus is the door, the entry into the Father's house, so is holy baptism, God's entry for you. Holy baptism is Jesus. Holy baptism is I am with you and for you. These great mysteries we are given not to solve, but to confess and embrace, as did Athanasius of Alexandria, thanks be to God. He almost certainly did not author the creed named for him, 
but it does set forth the faith he confessed. For this confession, he was exiled from Alexandria five times for a total of 17 years. Much of the Roman Empire and many churches and bishops denied the divinity of Jesus, that he is I am, same as the Father, such that Athanasius became known as Athanasius contra mundum, Athanasius against the world. Yet he held fast to the truth, to the faith of Christ given once for all the saints. Even his name is a confession. Athanasius means deathless. Christ Jesus, the I am, the deathless one, one with us, yet ever one with the Father and the Holy Spirit. We remember Athanasius, his opponents, not so much. Better still, I am the good shepherd, knows and remembers him, and I am knows and remembers you. How can he forget? For he says, Behold, I have graven thee on the palms of my hands with the nails by which he hung upon the tree for thee, for you. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds by his spirit in Christ Jesus. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
course, we include the family of Alcibiades, the brother of Emily Gibson's aunt by marriage. He entered heavenly rest on April 16th in Panama after an illness from the coronavirus. Let us pray. Blessed Shepherd, you established your church with your sacrificial death and mighty resurrection. Grant us devotion that we may abide in the teaching of the apostles and honor the fellowship of the church. Guard us against all enemies of your word and keep us within the care of your flock forevermore. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Mighty Shepherd, you hold in your hands all the might of man and you hold accountable those who would govern your people. Grant us good government and good public servants who will honor your purpose, protect your people, serve the cause of justice, and defend our liberty against all threats. Give them wisdom and moderation in their pandemic response. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving Shepherd, you love the world enough to shed your blood, and you desire that all would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Inspire and prepare your church and her ministers to speak faithfully and boldly your word, and bless all those who serve us on your behalf. Pour out your spirit upon our seminary graduates who have received their calls to serve as pastors and deaconesses, and bless those who have received vicarage and deaconess internship assignments. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious shepherd, by your spirit, sustain our brothers and sisters who are persecuted for the faith, and open the hearts of their persecutors to receive their faithful witness. Cause the gospel to break through and break forth in Wuhan and across China and across many lands that the, those people for whom you died and rose may confess you and rejoice eternally with us about your throne. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Shepherd, clothing us with your righteousness and teaching us to love all that is good, right, and true. Bless all artists and artisans, composers and musician, musicians, craftsmen and writers, that they may employ all their skills for your glory and in service to the gospel, and that the arts may testify to your saving death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful shepherd, whose wounds are our healing, whose voice calls us to you in time of need, bestow your holy comfort on the family of Alcibiades, the family of Beatrice Mushemi, and all who mourn. Hear us on behalf of all those who suffer in body or mind. William Mushemi, Bonnie LaBelle, Rob Kaler, Jerry Williams, Dave Heimsoff, Pastor Eugene Stowes, Miriam Stowes, Donna Holston, Diane Harris, Sandy Rhodes, Edgar Dreyer, Chris Littell, Max DeWeese, Virginia Polanco, and all the ill, the injured, and the convalescing. Grant them healing according to your will, grace to sustain them in the day of trouble, and hope of the new and everlasting life to come. Be with the unemployed and the distraught, and return them to health and livelihood. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Giving shepherd, you have not withheld anything from us, but emptied yourself fully upon the cross that we might be saved. Move our hearts to such devotion and teach us such generosity that we may bring to you the offerings of a grateful heart and serve our neighbors in need with the resources you have supplied to us so abundantly. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Good shepherd, you set your table among us in the presence of our enemies. Hear us as we are beset by so many false voices and tempted by so many false gospels. Help us to hear your voice and to abide safely in your ever-abiding word. By your word and spirit grow Grayson, Nolan, Dorothy, Isaac, Marin, and all our catechumens in faith and knowledge of you. And ever give us rest beside the still waters, the grace of our baptism. Bring good from ill and increase in all the hunger for your word and a recognition of our need that many may be gathered into your flock when church doors are opened wide again. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, who led your servant Athanasius of Alexandria to confess steadfastly the mystery of the Holy Trinity, your eternal being as one God in three persons, co-eternal and co-equal in majesty, and the mystery of the incarnation of the Son, Jesus Christ, true God and true man in one person. Grant your church grace to continue steadfast in this confession of the true faith, endure persecution, and remain constant in our worship of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. And a reminder, and thanks be to God, for the continued offerings being brought to the church, being sent in, a reminder to continue this uh, stewardship, this, stu this discipleship, 
this work of the economy of God's household, that his kingdom may grow and flourish here on earth by the support of his people. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O good and faithful shepherd Jesus Christ, who of your infinite love laid down your life for the sheep, we give you praise and glory for this, your unspeakable grace and mercy, and we implore you, feed us upon the pleasant pastures of your word, give us to drink of the waters of salvation, and guide us by your Holy Spirit, that as you know us and continually minister to our need, even so we may know you, gladly hear your voice, and follow you, and by you be delivered from all our foes, until the whole flock shall be gathered in your heavenly kingdom about you, who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Yeah.